In this video, I'm going to show you how to efficiently and effectively journal your trades to derive the most important analytics and elevate your trading to the next level. Now this journal that I've created in front of you is simple and concise and getting straight to the point. Now before we can go through each of these metrics, we need to first have a prerequisite that needs to be filled. And that prerequisite is the fact that we need to gather data. Now there's no way we can analyze data if we have none. So what I'd recommend is for you to lay out your journals like this using Notion, have the heading of the month, and then underneath it have each week as set out by me. So have the beginning of the day of the week from Monday and then the end of the week, which is the Friday. And then you can simply click on it and have it laid out like I have such. Now this may be a bit different in accordance to your strategy. However, to follow a general rule like this would be best in the beginning. Now once you've got a journal laid out like this and you've got a bunch of data, this is when you will have end of month summaries as I've laid out here. Now this is a example template. So as you can see, end of month summary for October 2023. So every month you're going to be having to journal your data and lay it out in such way so you can elevate your trading for the next month and know the points to take into consideration. Now the key to having a successful journal comes down to the data that you're gather gathering and the metrics that you're analyzing. So the most important metric is the return on investment because at the end of the day, if you have a good return on investment, there's no need for you to be changing your strategy or to be going in depth. There's really no point of going into much detail unless you're trying to improve a certain component in your strategy. So the return of, on investment will give you a good idea of whether you need something to improve. Now, as, as an example, I've written a return of investment of 2R. Now it's better to measure in R's instead of percentages because if one month you decide to risk 1% and another month you decide to risk 2%, your percentages and return on investments will be a bit skewed relative to the previous month. So having a R, R is way better than percentage because it stays constant regardless of whatever percentage you choose to risk on different months. Having said that, the return of, of investment is comprised of two components. The first component is the accuracy and the second component is your average risk to reward ratio. Now, depending on your accuracy and your average risk to reward ratio, that will ultimately impact your return on investment. This is why I've laid it out as such. Now, your accuracy is now made up of several different components within that. Now, it may be different to your strategy, but if you don't really know what components to be putting in your accuracy, I would recommend using mine to begin with. Now accuracy is comprised of the direction, the significant level, stop loss and TP level, entries, trade management and psychology. Now with time you may have certain components within accuracy which you feel as though that are missing, which you can always add when and if needed. Now the, the way you want to fill out this accuracy box is by looking at all the trades that you've lost and categorizing those losses into different categories. So in this case, we can clearly see we've had two losses and both of them was a result of entries. Now, if you click on that, you will then come to the prerequisite which I was talking about. It will bring you directly to your journal, which is what I discussed earlier on. And then you can come straight to your journal and see what exactly is going on and how you can potentially improve the entries that you've taken and leave a little comment on the side as well as such to help you understand why exactly you're going wrong. Now, if you come back to that category, you then have the next category, which is your average risk to reward ratio. Now, this is also a very important category because within the average risk to reward ratio comes two further categories, which is the average drawdown and the average deviation from TP. Now, in other words, the average drawdown is telling you how accurate your entries are, because if you've got good entries, ideally your drawdown should be 0%. So depending on how high your average percent, average drawdown percentage is, that will dictate to you whether your entries are at a good and acceptable standard or whether that needs improving. The next is the average deviation from TP. Now this is going to be the metric which tells you how well you're placing your TP level. So when your TP does get hit, how far further does price end up going in your favor or rather how far away it is away from your TP. So if it goes in your favor, it will be plus a hundred percent. If your TP doesn't get hit and it and price reverses before hitting your TP, then you'd want to put a minus 100% or have however much percentage deviation it was from your TP. Now this will tell you if your TPs are accurate. This will tell you if your entries are accurate and ultimately 
if both of them are at a good level and your risk to reward is still low then that means your stop loss is at a poor standard and that needs improving because then that just comes down to your process of elimination whereby your average drawdown which is your entries are a green tick and your average TP deviation is also a green tick and then if you're still struggling to increase your risk to reward then that means your stop loss needs improving on. So you can see how we're categorizing each thing to specifically focus on your weak points and how to improve that in the coming month. Now these are the two major blocks which you guys should focus on because it will help you ultimately increase your return on investment but then you can have other categories like I have done so here where you can have your total trades lost because sometimes I want to go through my losing trades one by one without having to constantly go back to that specific calendar month and calendar week and I can rather just click on the trades lost all available for me in that one block and then similarly I have the same for total trades one and then I also might make sure to keep a record of the trades that I've missed so that prevents me from missing unnecessary winning trades for the next month as well as my break even trades as well. Now once you've gone through that this will be a lot of metrics and a lot of analysis. This is where you come down to the summary. In your summary I would recommend for you guys to have a few targets which you want to be achieving and then you can have comments stating whether you've met these targets and also stating how well your um, categories are doing and whether there's a lot of losses in one specific category and how you can explain um, and how you can move on and prevent that from happening in the future. This comment section will be in a lot of detail however you then want to summarize that detail into take away two or three key key conclusive points which you can then remember and reiterate in your mind every single time when you come onto the charts in the next month so if one of your conclusive points is that you need to focus a bit more on your entries which in this case in this example we should do then you can have a detailed explanation as to what exactly within your entries do you need to be tweaking in your strategy to prevent unnecessary losses from occurring within the entries category so then that can be a thing you reiterate in your mind and you can even have a post-it note like I have at the bottom over here we can just type it up so whenever you come on the charts it is something which you are constantly um, speaking over in your mind to remember when you do take a trade the next following month. I hope this was informative for you guys this is something which definitely worked for me and improved my trading because this is more of a analytical scientific approach which which I like to take. I would like to hear your guys' feedback as well in the comment section down below. If you are interested in knowing how exactly to lay it out and how exactly to have all of these features, this is something I'll be covering in my um, trading journal portion of my structure-based trading course, which the link in the description will be down below. And if you guys have any other questions, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Other than that, if you did enjoy this video, do make sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel which you may find it um, beneficial like the one you see on your screen right now and other than that I'll see you guys next time.